The CDC is warning doctors to look out for possible cases of lead poisoning in children linked to tainted applesauce. In an interview with Politico, an FDA's official said it could be an intentional act on the part of someone in the supply chain. The FDA is still investigating several theories behind the contamination. Yo, we have known lead was toxic for like 6,000 years now and people still getting lead poisoning. What's going on? What's going on, y'all? So lead comes from a mineral, an ore, called galena. And this is lead atoms attached to some sulfur atoms. And they're in this like crystal lattice structure that turns into this mineral, galena. And it turns out that silver also occurs at the same time in deposits of this mineral in the earth. So early mining of lead was really just mining of silver. And then eventually people figured out that, hey, you know, this metal, we could use it for some things in particular cosmetics and somehow also medicine. We gotta mention the Romans for a second because, because they... <laughs> so the Romans, well known for using lead in plumbing. And if you didn't know, the symbol for lead, PB, stands for plum bum. And that's where the element lead gets its name from because it was used by the Romans for plumbing. And that's kind of where we plucked a lot of these names for these elements from. Also turns out that the Romans would like cook their wine down in earthenware made and made with lead. And this would make the sap of stuff that they added to their wine because it tasted sweet. So the Romans definitely take the cake for like intentional lead poisoning in history. And we knew it was toxic. Like it was known not long after it was kind of isolated that, you know, lead was bad for you, except it wasn't really like recorded formally, except this Roman dude Vitruvius did it. And he's like the one that's most known for like saying that lead was toxic and people didn't listen to him, I guess. I don't, I don't know why. But we really picked it back up with lead around the Industrial Revolution. And the Industrial Revolution is when people started looking a lot more closely at what we could do with the materials around us, including some of the metals. And lead, well, lead was taking the cake, baby. It's soft, it's easy to work with, melts at a low temperature. It's really easy to get it out of its native ore, galena. I think early people were able to isolate it in just straight up wood fires, you know? It's very resistant to corrosion. And at the end of it all, the things that you can make from lead, like the chemical compounds, the salts, and the organometallic compounds are actually all really useful too. In addition to like bullets and weights for fishing and various other industrial applications for making tools and fixtures and piping, two of the big uses that lead saw at post-industrial revolution were paint and leaded gasoline. Now the leaded gasoline took a little while to, to actually be developed, but once it was developed, oh boy, did we go crazy with that one. These uses kind of catapulted lead across the world into various people's homes and into various industrial settings. And then, and then we made the big mistake. So the big mistake, as many people might know, was tetraethyl lead or leaded gasoline. When your car burns gasoline, assuming you have a gas burning car, the piston has to ignite at the right time. And if it doesn't, this can cause what's called knocking. Tetraethyl lead was added to gasoline to kind of help prevent this problem. And it worked really well, like super well. Like, oh, it was, it was the best. Cars didn't break down as much. Gas was more efficient. Everybody was happy until they realized that they were pumping this tetraethyl lead stuff out into the atmosphere. And, you know, kids were just walking by breathing this stuff. And adults were just walking by breathing this stuff. And remember I told you Vitruvius knew it was toxic? I told you that, right? It took a while to get rid of lead and gasoline, largely because of marketing campaigns and efforts made to keep it on the market. But eventually, at least in gasoline, we were able to fully stop using lead for other alternatives. In addition to the leaded gasoline, leaded paint was also everywhere. Now, leaded paints, most, mostly in the form of lead carbonate, are a little less toxic, but still very toxic, especially because while it's resistant to weathering from the environment, it doesn't entirely not weather. So eventually it chips and flakes off and falls and these bits of dust get into people's airways or children find their way to them and eat them and or they get on kids' toys. And house paint wasn't the only place we were using these lead paints. So, you know, you're talking about kids' toys had this lead paint on it, you know, all kinds of fixtures and office buildings and various other places. Like, yeah, it was, we just, we was just, just, just I, yo, Vitruvius knew, like, we've known. <laughs>
But at this point, I wanna talk a little bit about why lead is toxic. What is it that lead does that makes it so bad for you? And just to be clear, lead is like really bad for you. It's one of those no safe level, one of those like any, any amount is bad for you kind of situations and particularly for children. So lead for all its wonderful uses outside of your body is kind of a problem inside your body because your body thinks it's calcium and lead also thinks it's calcium and it'll try and do all the things that calcium is supposed to do in your body, except it can't. It absolutely can't. It fails spectacularly every time it tries. Calcium, you know, you need for bone health and various other things, it's actually necessary for like neurons and signaling and such. And so anything that calcium does, lead is gonna try to do in your body, including cross your blood brain barrier and get into your brain, and then also get added into and stored in your bones. Now, the problem is that lead can't do what calcium does once it gets there. So it just ends up gumming up the works, making it difficult for synapses to fire, which can lead to the synaptic gap widening, which means that it's just kind of harder to think, literally. Uh, it can degrade neurons because calcium is necessary for, for the processes that neurons use to keep the myelin sheath nice and healthy. Uh, and then, yeah, again, it gets stored in your bones where it kind of disrupts the crystal structure of your bones. So that's kind of a problem. And then eventually it gets re-released back into your body somewhere over the course of like five to 10 years or something like that. So it's, it, it hangs out for a while. With children, it gets really rough because their brains are still actively developing. And so if this lead manages to gum up the works in the process of active development, it can lead to just fundamental structural issues with the development of a child's brain. So even though we stop using tetraethyl lead and gasoline and for the most part, leaded paints are banned in the US, lead is still finds its way into people's bodies all the time. Uh, one of the main ways it finds its way into people's bodies actually is through these <laughs> folk medicines that people can still buy for whatever reason. One of the other places that it shows up is in old houses that do still have lead paint that hasn't been removed or painted over, or it was painted over and now it's peeling again. And so if you need to test the paint that's in your house that's peeling, if this has suddenly alarmed you, they sell paint test strips at most hardware stores that use this stuff called potassium rodizinate in order to test for the presence of lead. It happens to make a very pretty red salt with the lead when it's present and otherwise it just looks yellow and uninteresting. But yeah, we still uh, we still rocking with lead. It, it has a lot of has a lot of uses, but we just can't let it go. If you're curious about other elements, I'd be willing to give it a shot, leave it in the comments. If you enjoyed this one, I appreciate it if you hit that like button. And until next time, it's Kim Thug.